what really is a miracle and what isn't a miracle. Here's the definition that we're gonna really build the rest of today on by a Christian philosopher named J.P. Moreland. He says, it's an event or intervention that is caused by the special action of God or some other supernatural being, other supernatural beings, angels and demons can also do supernatural things. He says, that is an exception to the ordinary law governed course of nature for some specific purpose. And that last little line, for some specific purpose, really sets apart a miracle from everything else. John chapter 14, verse 12, Jesus is talking to his disciples. It's one of his last conversations with his disciples before he's arrested. And he says this, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing, the signs, the wonders, the miracles, the healings, the deliverance. He who believes in me will do these things. They will do even greater things than me because I am going to the Father. And Jesus is trying to help us understand that believers will carry on the miracles miracle working authority of God into their relationships. We're supposed to continue the tradition of unleashing God's miracles in the world. Mark chapter six, verse 12, Mark says this, as he summarizes what happened after those ministry outings, he says, they went out and preached that people should repent. They drove out many demons and they anointed many sick people with oil and healed them. Jesus did this for his disciples. He promised in John, all who believe in me will do the things I have been doing. And I believe now here at LifeGate Church, God has us in a season where he's saying, I wanna do more of this stuff. Miracles point beyond themselves to God's supernatural pursuit of the human heart. Miracles have been historically one of the primary ways where God reveals to his people that he is there and that he cares. A miracle is God does something outside of the normal laws of nature. A blessing would be that within this world in which we live, God leverages this good world that he's created to bring something good into our lives. People who are walking with Jesus get blessings and people who are not walking with Jesus get blessings. Some people notice blessings all over the place and some people barely ever notice a blessing. But blessings are everywhere and they're God's goodness displayed to humanity through the natural order of things. But a miracle is something different. A miracle goes beyond the supernatural, go, goes beyond the natural order into the supernatural, okay? So there's actually a way to determine if something is a coincidence, a blessing, or a miracle. This is used, this little path I'm gonna show you, or this filter I'm gonna show you, is used by insurance companies, police officers, and forensic scientists when they're trying to determine if a death is accidental or intentional. Intelligent agent principle. And what it basically says is it's trying to help us determine if a person, someone with the brain and motives and the ability to plan things, if they were involved in a particular situation. All of a sudden you would say this wasn't just an accident, but there's a good chance that there was an intelligent agent involved in this particular situation. That's how insurance companies think about things, detectives, forensic scientists, and it's actually how we can think about miracles as well. There's two factors to this, and this is how you think about it. The first is low probability. This is the first thing, low probability. These are the, the chance that an event can happen naturally or would happen normally are low. All right, so that's the first determiner. Is it low probability? A winning card hand at just the right time running into someone in a large city three times in one day. If the event had significance, it's special significance, then it raises the possibility that it was actually a miracle. This is what people look at in the detective world. And I think it's something we can look at in the spiritual realm as well. Y'all, I believe that when the probabilities are low and the circumstances are special, that what we're working with is a miracle because God has a history of being a miracle working God who is supernaturally going after the human heart and how to cultivate a miracles mindset, to be honest about your doubts. Sometimes in settings like this, we feel like we have to hide our doubts or we'll be looked down upon. God wants us to bring our doubts to the surface so he can deal with them. 
I actually believe that the best way to build faith is not through suppressing, but through addressing our doubts. I believe when we go to God and say, I'm giving you this, but I don't know that you can do it. Or I know you might do it in other people's lives, but I'm not convinced you'll do it in mine. Where in your life do you need to create the space for God to move? Maybe it's just asking him for the impossible. There's stuff going on in your life right now that you are working your brain to figure out how you're gonna solve it. And I would encourage you just calm down and ask God to speak or God to move and give him some space to show up and see what he might do. So often y'all, we're so quick to solve our own problems, to, to answer our own questions. But if we slow down and create the space, you might be surprised in how God shows up. 